Well, the Narifa Swamp we consider to be a very important area, first of all, for the forestry division. Um, we put it on par as the Karani Swamp, and we consider it the largest freshwater swamp, and in fact the most diverse in terms of habitats. It's extremely important because of some of the species that you have, there, like the manatee. It's one of the few places you can go and um, see both the capuchin and the red howler monkeys. It's the home for the anaconda. You know, those are probably the more unique species, but then there's everyday species, of course, um, that you can find. So all in all, we consider it to be such a treasure trove for wildlife. We therefore think it's quite an important wetland ecosystem for Trinidad. What caused problems down the road in terms of the contested nature of the use of the resources was that when um, larger and larger farmers began to come in, the rice issue was only within the late 80s into um, 93, 94, 95. As we were getting involved in that project, the Nariva issue came into the public limelight. As women environmentalists were challenging the government uh, in relation to the use of rice farmers, etc., of the swamp. So we felt that this would be a good opportunity for us to get in there to study a contested wetland, and we could use that as a mechanism to introduce gender analysis. methods, participatory research approaches to gaining information or gathering data is one which involves the community and the people who are involved in the area. It can take several different uh, methodologies. One is ethnographic, uh, that is the researchers go into the community, they live among the, part, the, the people there, they observe them, they look on and they take notes and really you need a fairly long time to establish a relationship when you get in and to build a trust during that approach. It also can incorporate focus group discussions, getting members of the community together on a particular issue to bring forward what they know about the community, what they're doing, and documenting this in a sometimes very pictorial fashion in the form of charts and pictures and so on. So the community are actively involved in gathering the data. This makes them aware of the environment. Part of my work was to look at the history of development of the community as well as the resource use over time. And in order to do that, I asked them to draw me maps of what Kunan and Kaskadu looked like 50 years ago when they first came in and what it looks like to now, as well as how the men and women perceived the changes and how those changes affected their lives over time. If you could just go through the map and tell me if it is in line with what you saw when you first came to Kunan and Kaskadu. Now what the others told me is that they came through Cascadu Trace here, which at the time was a dirt road, that's correct? Yeah, well, at the earliest times, it was a, a track through the bush, mm -hmm. right? So before dirt road, it was just a small track? Yeah, a track through the bush. Okay. And, and develop after, after, from year to year, we started cut the bush 
make place. When I had animal, now I make place to run up animal. So gradually they cut down the forest. Yeah, well, we we get clear up the forest. Mm -hmm. But, but um, after it had a, a storm pass before, what they call Alma. Mm -hmm. I tell you about that. Yes, 1974. Yeah, Alma pass and pushed down most of the forest because in front here we see it, it have more trees and things. The Alma pass rapid, pass straight across here. Too. change in the ecosystem happening. You have loss of species, you have animals being pushed out of their habitats, they were pushed further into the forests as women and children started to move in as well. So as family units came in over time the swamp environment itself changed because of utilization and in many instances we tend to develop plants for an area without getting to know what that community wants and what are the different needs for that community. My role specifically was to become a member of the team that was coming in here for a period of five months to look at local level governance issues. By local level governance issues, we're talking specifically looking at how does the social, political, and economic conditions within the community interact on decision making process and community. Roger and um, Kelly and they were telling me you were one of the past presidents in the village council here. So I was wondering if you could tell me, enlighten me a little bit on the village council and, and how you were involved in it. Okay, in the village council, I do, in this time, was one Mr. Benjamin Joseph. He the founder of the village council and it was registered on a Cascado. Right? But okay, so it wasn't originally Kerner and Cascado Village it was Council. Cascado Village Council. Okay. And uh, Mr. Benjamin Joseph. And um well he got a little ill and he said the only person that he could foresee to carry on the village council in the area after him is me. And I was he must be voted to be the, the president at the village council in Cascado. Well, how long ago was that? How long did um approximately about ten years back? What were some of the findings of the research? There were distinctions between different social groups. Um, key persons of influence were identified. Um, their roles and their, their ability to influence community decisions. We tried to understand how that system worked. Women at the household level and the rules are clearly limited. It's limited to children tending to livestock, to basic household chores, and some activities related to gardening. The role outside of the household, where we found, however, that it's severely limited. Nicola Cross and myself were working, looking at things like the social aspects of people's lives, the economic aspects of people's lives, household relations, conflicts in the villages and conflicts in households. And so what we were really looking at is how the community related to each other and how people in households, men, women, bo boys and girls, all related to each other. We went around with people, we hung out with them, we laughed with them, we talked with them, we did what they did, we went in their gardens, we sat under the house, we limed on the corner with the young boys, we hung out underneath the house with the young girls, we ch chatted with people about their daily lives. When you go in the garden, how do you dress? Well, simple, put a pants underneath the dress because of the mosquitoes and sand flies and things. Put a hat and a long sleeve shirt. But how come you don't wear just pants and no dress? Well, not on, on several occasions I wear pants. Alone? Alone. Okay. Yeah, wear a t-shirt or something. Otherwise, to the garden, well, we wear the underpants. I've never seen you in pants. Yes, right Alone. <laughs> I love wearing pants. That is one of my wear. I love that. 
Okay, so say you come back at 10 o'clock, then what? Right. Well, then we come, we relax home a little bit, and then we look after what we have to cook or something, because the children go to school, have to prepare lunch. You all cook together? Or how? No. We'll, we'll relax. No, we will relax. Go and put on television, a video. As well, now we have video and thing. He will put on his cassette and go and sit down and look at it, and I will cook. We didn't ever uh, use a tape recorder. We would just listen, give them our full attention, put them at ease by having a conversation, and then when we left them, we would sit immediately, and together, Nicola and I would just try and remember everything and take down notes. And age, gender, class, farming, fishing, your family networks, if you have access to them, all make a difference in the quality of life. We really looked at people's lives and how women's lives were different from men's and how boys' lives were different from girls. So we looked at how households operated, what, what chores basically people had, um, how people felt about things, that was a, a big part of the project. Um, how did people see other people's lives? must get vexed with each other for some silly little something as happens everywhere in everywhere, the world. Yeah, what yeah, kind of things do you all get vexed yeah. about? Like little stupidness. Uh -huh. You put this there, you put that there and you forget when you do it. It's like those little things uh -huh. there. But I just not take it on. I just yeah. keep on doing my work. Yeah, you mustn't on. get vexed. Mm -hmm. yeah, because if you get vexed, when you get vexed you will get angry and want to curl and want to mm -hmm. fight. And when you told a curl and argue it's a fight. So mm -hmm. one had to stay quiet. So mm -hmm. I don't just leave it up. When we first came in here, we thought, oh gosh, everybody's poor. And then after being here, we realized that, no, that wasn't true. It's just that they were spending money on different things. We then had to try and say, well, okay, why do we think this? And we tried different means of actually trying to verify this. Then we started talking to people about how much they earned, and that was very difficult because people didn't want to talk about that. What were some of the interesting things we did find out? had to do with the gendered ways in which men and women use the environment. We found that the space was gendered. We found, for example, that the forest was a very male space and that it was not easy for women to enter into that space. Certain tasks that were used in day-to-day -day livelihood as well as in subsistence were also gendered. We also found that in terms of the knowledge of the species, and the natural resources around, that women's knowledge of the environment tended to be much less than men's. I was amazed after a few months of the researchers being in there at the um, level of articulating uh, the, some, among some of the young people, the way in which they articulated were able to speak out. I think that has um, come out very clearly um, their knowledge. They were able to talk about certain species and certain things in bush bush which I'm sure they were not really comfortable with or aware of before. What did you feel you learned while we were here or what did you feel about our time here in Freetown? Actually well, I learned a lot. Things about I didn't even know about. Uh, the modern things in our own community that we didn't even know about. Like what? Uh, medicinal plants that other people knew in the community, but we were in the community we didn't know about. Learn a lot about from you all about saving our community by not destroying it and also our wildlife and the forests and things like that. I think um, the community need more training because it seems like people do not like they do not understand what is livelihood then. Okay, when our children get older like us, them won't even know what is cascade, do, what is accounts, what is forest, what is a good tea, lap, maybe. You know, why life then? 
Y'all ever found that we were too much in your all's lives? Mm -hmm. Or you thought the advice was good? Did you take our advice? Did you not? What, maybe we could talk about that. No, it was not um, metal, but I didn't take